Hello and welcome to Rusty Water Towers, the podcast in search of faith and hope in rural life and ministry. As always, I'm your host, Dr. J, Jonathan Lamaster Smith, and today is a special day. Today is our 500 Listen Spectacular, so I thought I'd tackle a subject that came up in the first Get to Know Our Host episode, and that was a question of why country music? Why, in the midst of all the other interesting and creative and beautiful genres of music we have, it's, it's country music the one you, you focus on? And I'm going to take some time today to talk about why country music. But first, as always, I want to talk about some country music to get us started. This today, I have two songs. This is a country music spectacular since we got 500 listens. Again, y'all, I want to talk about how excited I am about 500 listens. I know podcast hits millions of listens a week sometimes. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm just happy that I'm reaching people. I'm getting emails from people all over the place saying I was listening to your podcast. It really touched me. Text message, Facebook, people following me now on the socials that weren't following me before. And I'm just glad that this podcast and all the other resources I try to provide are helping. So I want to talk about two songs. The first is Hank Williams, I Saw the Light. And the second is A Little Dive Bar in Dahlonega by Ashley McBride. These songs are 60 years apart, but are both songs about redemption. Williams' I Saw the Light was first recorded and released in 1948. And it was not a very successful song, but eventually it would be the song that would he would end most of his concerts with. And eventually, it would go on to be one of his most recognized songs, particularly a song that gets sung most often in churches. Uh, it is a song, of course, about redemption. I'll read some of the lyrics to you. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness. No more light. Now I'm so happy. No sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. In the second verse, I started in the first chorus. Just like a blind man, I wandered along. The worries and fears I claimed for my own. Then like the blind man that God gave back his sight, praise the Lord, I saw the light. And it goes back into that cor chorus. This song offers a sense of redemption, but it's also significant that it was a song that was sung at country concerts and on country radio to people who may never otherwise hear songs of redemption. Hank may, be in a, may have been in a honky-tonk singing on the stage at a huge concert venue, or it might be your church choir singing it. This song offers a sense of redemption a, and a song that's easy to sing along to to remind us what life we are offered, particularly, of course, for the Christian faith in Jesus Christ, but also that we can be offered redemption wherever we are and in lots of different ways. And that'll take us to a little dive bar in Dahlonega, recorded in 2018. Ashley McBride actually just won a Grammy uh, as at time of recording in the 2023 Grammys. To the flat broke, couch cushion, gas money, the worker bee that ain't getting no honey. Missing someone all the while running, gunning for the brighter lights. Here's to the breakups that didn't break us, to the breakdown, wrong turn that takes you, to a little dive bar in Dahlonega. Hear a song from a band that saves you. Yeah, man, it's hitting rock bottom, smoke them if you got them. Nothing's going right, making the best of the worst day kind of night. And it just goes on, and it offers this sense of hope to it that even if you just end up in a dive bar in Dahlonega, you get to hear a song that saves you. Maybe it's I Saw the Light. Maybe it's Little Dive Bar in Dahlonega, but country music seems to have been a saving grace for so many people to offer life and hope to people. I think that's one of the big reasons that I like country music. It offers people a chance to hear songs of redemption in their language, particularly rural people. I'll put these songs in our playlist as I always do. And now we're going to get into talking about why country music. First of all, I grew up on it. Literally, my mom would play Dolly Parton records, vinyls, while I went to sleep as a baby. People listened to country. We sang country in church alongside of the hymns. It was what I heard. I also grew up during the 90s country resurgence. The big Alan Jackson, Shania Twain, Faith Hill, even up into the point of the Johnny Cash resurgence with Hurt, the Nine Inch Nails cover. All of those sort of things. The watermelon crawl and maybe it was memphis toby keith coming into the line like the dixie chicks now the chicks those sort of things this resurgence in country music mixed with the tradition of country music that is a music that seems to be for the people who are hard working aren't connected to the city life and aren't looking for huge limelight sort of things and when they get into the limelight they're sort of shocked by it so many of the country singers, particularly from the 60s and 70s, 
sing songs about like Rhinestone Cowboy, that shocking reality of getting cards and letters from people you don't know. Dolly Parton talking about getting Tennessee home sick see, see blues. That was Glenn Campbell was the first one. That this is people who are looking and seeking to describe life and to explore it in such a way that people can hear it and listen it in their way. It's also providing a language for faith outside of the rigid Bible Belt language, whether it's through Jesus Christ or through finding community in a bar. You can hear these songs pop up regularly in country music. Tech Sample writes about country music in his book, White Soul, and talks about country music as not having to be taken literally, so lots of other songs can be about faith. You get Chris Christopherson's Help Me Make It Through the Night. That song's about staying the night with someone. But Sample talks about that song as being one that helped a mother who was worrying about her son pray for him and say, Lord, help him make it through the night. Whatever you need to do, help him make it through the night. That sort of reality that can be found in country music. It allows for us to meet together. We see people coming together for country music across multiple political and even economic stratifications. People find a love for country as part of that. The next question that comes up regularly is why country music or why just country music? And that question's a, an easy one to answer for me in a lot of ways. Of course, I grew up on it, but it's sort of been my bread and butter. I fell into country music as a voice for rural life. Country music featured in my dissertation. Country music, I taught courses in it. I preached sermons, including country music. It is my context, my specialty. And just as someone else might pick looking at the blues, looking at hip hop, looking at rock, looking at gospel. And there are plenty of work done on this. It's important to remember that my focus is not just that we should diversify our understandings of music. There's plenty of diversity within country music. We're seeing evolutions of queer country music. We're seeing a resurgence and a reclaiming of black country music. We're seeing country music from other countries, from other languages, how it continues to speak to people. In fact, I was teaching a course in rural ministry and had some students from Africa. I believe this student was from Kenya. And he said he fell in love with Brooks and Dunn because of my class, because they sing what feels like the rural working folk songs. And even though we're in different places with different backgrounds and different understandings, the rural language of country music will transfer. And though it might not be a red dirt road, it might be a different color clay, but there's still some rural realities. As we continue into that, thinking about that, my favorite artist, of course, has to be Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton continues to tell stories in a masterful way that offers hope and life to people. I think she's one of the people that everyone sort of comes together to like. You know, a few people will not like her just because, she, but I think she's one of those people that can write music all from all different places and do all different sort of things and think about what that looks like. My favorite country song, however, is not a Dolly Parton song. It's actually Rustin Kelly's Son of a Highway Daughter. Kelly will consider himself sort of an alt-country, country music singer. And he was actually my first time to the Ryman. I saw him as part of that. He writes and sings, I'm the son of a highway daughter born in gasoline. I trace the steps of my foolish father and dance with the devil in Galilee. It was a cold winter, ice above the water, and nails stuck between my toes. So I pried out and I buried my doubt in all the women along the road. And I went down to Duplin County where I found God in a bottle of wine. And I headed up north thinking I could find any work or peace of mind. But nobody sells that around here too much anymore. There's no chorus to the song. It continues just to go on about this person's journey and trying to figure out where he's headed, what's going on. It turns out a town keeps calling. A town keeps calling him. And it seems to pull him back to where he needs to go. Now, whether that's his hometown or his town that he needs to go work in, sing and play in the town where a lover is, the town that gave him life, it does not matter. It's a place that keeps calling him no matter where he goes. There's parts of that. And I think that's sort of a prophetic reality we can look into and what's calling us, what's pulling on us as part of that. But again, like I said, it often sort of feels like sort of a Jesus story or a prophet story in that itself. Now, my favorite current album that's just current, like I'm listening to a lot, is L. King's Come Get Your Wife. I fell in love with her when I heard her song, Drunk I Don't Want to Go Home. 
it's fun party songs that get you going about how you know life's hard sometimes but sometimes we don't have to wait until the weekend to get a little crazy let's go out on a tuesday that sort of thing and excites and celebrates that sort of excitement in life and also the chaos that can come with it, the bad decisions that might come with it but to celebrate making decisions and doing crazy things because sometimes you don't get to do that the song on there that's the sappiest and i think it's still probably my favorite on the on the come get your wife album is lucky where she just thinks about how she's gotten so lucky with all the opportunities she had because of the choices she made she probably shouldn't have ended up where she is as part of that and yet she's thankful for that and then another song is try jesus and it's about dating in the modern world and how people put on fake appearances and yet maybe she should just give it all up and try jesus and go with it great album highly recommend before we get to the last part of the episode i want to take time to take a quick break and listen to these messages we'll be back hi there jonathan here and i'm recording this ad to tell you about a resource from the hinton rural life center my wife Shannon and I have partnered with Hinton to create the Theotokos Connections Confirmation Curriculum for small rural churches. We designed this curriculum with rural youth programs in mind, where you really want to connect their teenagers with the culture, heritage, and place on top of the faith you're trying to instill through the confirmation program. There are six sessions that focus on topics like connecting to self, God, history, church, place, and creation. Each unit has either a Bible story, like the story of Mary or the story of Samuel, or a historical figure like Richard Allen or Harriet Tubman to engage with as part of the experience. But this experience is not just a sit and listen and do a paperwork kind of confirmation. It's an active and connective confirmation program. You might be headed to a museum, helping prepare for a church spaghetti supper, learning new prayer practices, assisting in worship, or volunteering at the local mission agency. It is designed with rural culture and rural life in mind. You can do this in six weeks, six months, and you can do them in most any order or form you want to engage. And I'll tell you, I, I'm pretty sure it's not just youth programs using this curriculum. I've seen other people get it for their college ministries, as well as perhaps using it as adult confirmation or adult refresher on Methodist and rural culture and life. And you know, if you have other trusted confirmation curriculum you want to pair it with, go ahead. This is a very customizable program. So if you want to bring other lessons from a different program you've used or things you've written yourself, feel free to blend them in. This is also a very affordable program and you pay per student, not for a lump sum curriculum that you may not use all the pieces of, or you may not use but once every two or three years. And this is designed to make it affordable and accessible for you. And it pairs well with Hinton's Theotokos confirmation retreats that happen in the spring. For more information on the curriculum or to place an order, check out hintoncenter.org slash theotokos or hintontheotokos.org for more information. Thanks. And then we look next at an artist I've not spent a lot of time with and I feel like I should have because I live in the same state he's from is Randy Travis. I can name maybe two Randy Travis songs. And I feel a little ashamed about that. So I'm going to intentionally spend some time with Randy Travis as we get into that. And now a song giving me hope, because this is all about hope, is Rusty by Gabe Lee. We've talked about Gabe Lee on here before, from his previous album, 30 Seconds at a Time. But this, this song gets into the sort of running wild sense of living life. And yet, and yet it pulls you back into maybe life's a little better now that you're a little rusty as part of that. He writes, all the roads around here will get you where you're going. All the roads around here will slow you down someday. When you're grown up on the winding streets of Nashville, he's from Nashville, you're bound to know them all by name. I left that town, town as soon as time would let me. I drove as far as luck would have me drive. I once spent a summer hiding out in Bristol. Over 20 years ago, I made you cry. But it's all gone now since it all broke down. Now I'm rusty, I'm running out of steam. Now I'm rusty, I've been running out of steam. Too many miles on these poor tires and not enough gasoline. Man, I'm busted. Lord, I got a longer way to go. Won't you send out an angel on patrol for to save my soul, to save my soul. Used to run on nothing back in high school, barely grown and acting like a man. When mama was around, I drove her crazy. She'd say, son, when you get old, you'll understand. And now it's all gone. 
since it all broke down. Now it goes back into the chorus. This song seems like another song about someone seeking out redemption and thought they'd find it elsewhere, but end up maybe finding it back in that town or in some other town that gives them hope. But it's that realization that they're rusty, that at a certain age you can't run on nothing, that you have to take care of yourself, that you have to figure out what life is about, and realizing why people are the way they are as they get older. I think for me, giving me hope is I'm a, if you pay attention to me at all outside of the podcast, I am someone who has what feels like 12 jobs, and even this week, different opportunities have come up that I've had to push off to conversations about in March and those other sort of things. Because I have so many people, because I'm trying to help so many people. And it, it makes me so happy to be able to do that. But it's that whole sort of thing, you know, that whole sense of used to run on nothing back in high school, barely grown and acting like a man. That sort of reality of now, you know, I'm running, I've been running out of steam too many miles on these four tires and not enough gasoline. I need to take time to make sure that I putting gas in the car, that I'm taking care of myself as part of that. So Gabe Lee's Rusty is great to make you think about that and the hope you can get even if you feel rusty. Finally, uh, I wanted to give an unpopular opinion. I like Florida Georgia Line. Florida Georgia Line gets a lot of flack for being sort of a pop, hip-hop, country crossover. And really, I'm not here to gatekeep country music. And I think they're a lot of fun to listen to. I particularly like as they got more into them, their feelings, that sort of sense of their song Confession. Oh, it's such a good song, thinking about life and sitting just waiting and watching the fire, driving and looking at the windshield, reflecting on what their life has been like. Or may we all, in that sense, of may we all get to grow up in a rural small town, those sort of things. And, you know, they've got some poppy, silly stuff, but why not? Just let them have fun with it. I think that we try to act like there's only one kind of country music that can be successful or can be real. And I think we need to learn that even within country music, like even within pop or hip hop or blues, there are genres of that. And you may not like the poppy, auto-tuned feeling sort of understanding of that, but maybe pieces of it you do. Maybe if you give it a chance, you'll listen to it. A lot of people still to me today say, I just can't listen to country Either it's the twang or it's the sad stuff or it's the tear in my beer or it's what my granddad used to listen to all the time and it drove me crazy, those sort of things. But I do want to say that country music, for me, gives me a lot of hope and allows for us to think about life in lots of different ways in different places. Whether it's from the mountains of West Virginia, whether it's from Canada, whether it's from, from the cities in Texas or from other places like that, there's a lot of opportunity to, for us to engage with country music from different places. I think of all the opportunities we have to see live country music. It doesn't have to be famous names, but the chance to go out and see, I'm buying tickets for $15, $30. I think the most I've spent on a ticket recently has been 45 to find, see these smaller artists that are great. I got, I've gotten the chance to see a couple of, couple of big artists. The, the ones I can think of, of course, are Dolly Parton and the Chicks in terms of country music, and yet I've gotten to see a lot of other really neat and interesting country artists that I've been able to in interact with because of this. So my encouragement for you is that even if you're not a country music person, to give it a chance and to at least appreciate what it's doing and what it's trying to do. And my hope is that in understanding that, you get a chance to think about what these songs are speaking hope to, what th these songs are lifting up and not to give up on that. So as we continue on with this podcast, and I've got lots of other opportunities lined up, I've got another, another episode on the way next week, and I've got a lot of other people scheduled to interview. We're going to keep going and have a great time with this, but there'll always be a country song at the beginning for us to find hope in. Special thanks to my wife, Shannon Lamaster Smith, for recording the song Hildebrand. You can listen to Rusty Water Towers wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Thanks so much for all the people who've made our 500 listens spectacular, a thing. I'm just so excited that people are finding hope in this podcast. And continue to review it wherever you can, to share it with your friends, to share it when I post it on social media. You can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and, Insta and Instagram. And stay tuned for more exciting things from me. Again, if you have any questions, do reach out to us. Our email is in the show notes, rustywatertowers at gmail.com. And again, find us on social media and find me on social media. Thanks, and have a great day. Live
live across the railroad tracks in the little white house must you pass if you weren't trying to find me many of the trees are dead there's stumps in the ground in a great big yard across from the fire station 